people. I'm Ginny Motherwell and I'm a fourth generation witch. Today I wish to discuss the first of the three harvest festivals of the Wiccans, which we call Lunasa, but was otherwise known as Lammas. Lammas or Lunasa is a grain festival. And what do you make with grain? You make bread. So I want to show you in this video a really quick herby soda bread that you can feed to your many friends and family as part of your Lama celebrations. And I'm also going to discuss with you mandalas and a flower one that I have made with my intent and tell you why this is such a great way to celebrate this feast day. So with that said, I want to give you a little bit of background about Lammas. Lunasa is the Wiccan form of it. Lammas is the Christian. Lammas is a contraction of the word loaf mass. But Lunasa is, of course, a very old festival. It has lots of elements of sacrifice, of the grain harvest, spilling of blood on the fields, and the celebration and thanksgiving to Mother Earth for the bounty that she's starting to produce. Lunasa was used as a human sacrifice date. It was one of the Celtic fire festivals, and so these huge bonfires where the wicker men were erected, these would have been part of certain druid festivals at that time for Lunasa. So it's got a lot of mm, elements of spilling blood. It still is a celebration of the sun. Lu, for Lunasa, was a sun god. He was considered very tall, very good looking, very athletic. John Barleycorn is the English equivalent, I suppose, of Lu, the sun god. He is the god of the grain and he has cut down, his blood is spilt upon the earth and then his spirit is encased in a corn dolly or corn sheath in order to be ploughed into the earth next year. It's a beautiful death and rebirth symbolism as we're moving forward into winter at the moment because of course the 1st of August is actually the first day of autumn in the pagan year because the energy for autumn is all about seed setting, fattening and ripening. The celebrations for August are varied. You know, it's normally a some bread, a bonfire and a celebration of the cycle of life. And Lammas or Lunasa traditions are many and varied. One of my favourites though, when the first grain sheath was cut, it was the start of people to be able to have a trial marriage. And this normally lasted the length of the festival, which because it was reckoned that cutting the grain takes about 11 days, therefore, the marriage lasted 11 days. In this trial marriage, you could work out whether you wanted to stay with them or leave with no you know, consequences. And even if you became pregnant during that time, that was fine. It's a Lammas festival. Of course, the father was expected to care for the child, but no love is lost. You must also watch out on the coastal towns to see if geese and ducks are running about with straw in their beaks, because if they are, we're stuffed for a really hard winter. So I've never seen a geese or a duck running around with straw in their beaks. So, I mean, they must do, I presume, to build their nest, but never, I've never seen that myself. So I'm going to tell you a bit about the Lunasa Lammas Festival while I'm showing you how to make my herby soda bread, which is so quick and easy and delicious. I'll put the exact ingredients below, but you'll need butter, bicarb, some herbs of choice. I think I'm using here sage and marjoram and then some salt, some oats, some plain all-purpose flour, which I'm, I think is called all-purpose in America, and then finally you will require some buttermilk. The recipe couldn't be easier. You simply place it all in a bowl and stir it up until it makes a very sticky dough. So whilst you're watching me make this, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about Lammas traditions. Lammas is definitely a time for the Fae. I mean, the festival itself covers from the 1st to the, about to the 11th of August. And this is the time when the Fae are quite prevalent in the country. They are there to help you with the corn. They're there to look after you. And if you leave out offerings to them, your harvest and your home will be blessed. However, you mustn't go and look at them because otherwise they won't come back and they won't help again. They love something called a fairy loaf, which is this fossilised, I think it's an anemone, isn't it? And these fairy loaves make great offerings to put upon your altars in honour of this season. 
The Covenant of Customs claims that you should just leave an offering to the Fae, whatever that may be. Maybe a quarter of this Lammas loaf would make a good offering to the Fae. You must always follow the old ways. Corn dollies are also something that should be placed upon your lunisa altar. Corn dollies hold the spirit of the grain, and even if yours don't hold the spirit of the grain, they bring in fertility, birth and luck for the future years. So I've, I've always enjoyed a corn dolly, and they've always been a strong held custom in my household. The other thing that I love doing at this time of year is to create a mandala. A mandala is essentially a sacred representation of the universe. They have been used by every culture throughout history, including us witches. Popular types of northern mandalas are dream catchers, which are protective and ward off nightmares and bad dreams. Art therapy is part of making a mandala because it's relaxation and stress relief, leading to greater awareness and personal development. And also, this is a great way to practice mindfulness. Start in the centre and work outwards. It helps us as witches ground us to Mother Earth. And this is a craft, or a witchcraft, and looks beautiful. I'd love to know what sort of traditions that you celebrate Lunasa with. Do leave me a comment below. And otherwise, don't forget to go to patreon.com. There's details on that about how you can book into one of my witchcraft retreats, which I'm really excited about, actually. I can't wait to show you all the witchcraft that we can do in just two to three days. It's going to be great. Otherwise, please, could you like and subscribe? Because that would make me so happy. I do sit there watching the subscriber count going up on my channel with utter, utter intensity and glee. I'm just like, oh, no, another subscriber. So thank you if you've already done so. And if you haven't, go on, press that button. And I will see you all next week.